what's going on guys welcome back to the channel Pete's carport so today I decided I was gonna go ahead and clean up the car we purchased for my wife not too long ago now we haven't had much time to do anything with it the car does start run uh, it probably needs a tune-up uh, a couple other things I might need to change the fuel filter out again run some fuel cleaner through it uh, but it does start right up it's got a, a Chevette, I think it's an 87 is all the parts I've been purchasing for this Chevette engine in it. And um, it's registered ironically as a 1987 Firebird. So it was a little confusing on figuring out parts, but so far um, I've done the brakes, the standard stuff, and picked up spark plugs and some other things and just haven't had the time to get to it. And the car is extremely dirty. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull it out of this carport area here we're going to get it cleaned down really, really well, polish up some of the stuff that needs to be polished, and then I'm going to do a walk around, go over it. I'm going to take it for a little bit of a ride around the block, and then um, I just want to kind of talk about the car, show you guys around it in case you haven't seen the past videos, or if you're one of those people that are out looking for one of these, it's a 1929 Mercedes replica SSK, and they call it a Gazelle, I believe, is um, kind of one of the names that they use for this car. Uh, but it replicates the uh, race car that Mercedes used, the Roadster. Um, and there's a lot of fun, cool things about it. It's now a classic replica, so that's kind of neat because obviously it's titled as a 1987. So now it can have an antique plate and kind of resemble what the 80s wanted to do with these cars. This one is very well made. I'll go over that with you guys. It's from, um, it's got a plate on it and it's from a well-known replica company. So this was one of the better ones that they made. And it's got some of the nicer features like the air conditioning and so forth. So let's go ahead and get the top off this, get her cleaned up. And then I'll do a full walk around and take it for a ride. Okay, now that we've got the top off, you can see how nasty this car got just from sitting up underneath that carport. And it's been a pretty heavy rain season this year. So my goal now is um, to either find a better area to store this in or get a really nice cover because this car will not be driven that much, but we do want to enjoy it from time to time. I also went down and picked up this, um, basically it's a chemical sprayer from Harbor Freight that's a backpack style because obviously being a convertible, we don't have the top for it. It makes it a little more difficult to clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and basically spray this whole thing down and um, speed through some of that so you guys can catch that and I'm just gonna really just get it with soap water get it cleaned down as best I can and then um, take it for a ride Okay guys, so she's all cleaned up. Nothing spectacular, I didn't go crazy. 
I um, actually just got done talking to my wife and I think what we're gonna do is take it down to a place or do it myself depending on uh, how much time I have but we want to do a full paint correction ceramic coat since there's not a whole lot of paint to this and some of these pieces like this um, that's not chrome but more of a painted I'm probably gonna take those off re repaint those even the um, the rear gas cap just because over time they've gotten um, kind of aged if you want to say and what I want to do is if I can get them to look good like this front grille is not chrome but just a painted chrome color I still think it looks phenomenal in that color so if I can you know respray it in that color um, this front bumper as well here and then use that 2k clear over it I think it'll look really really good now the interior is where it's gonna need more of the work but I kind of we you know me and my wife talk about it all the time we kind of like the patina of it like the gauges not all of them do work so we probably want to get those working but they do have some age to them the one downside is this this was a little crack in the seat and actually started like right there and now it's kind of spread so uh, most likely gonna have to redo at least that seat if not both of them at the same time probably not a very expensive thing but this is, uh, like I said earlier, a 1929 replica. They call it the Gazelle. And um, this right here, or SSK Gazelle, I believe. This shows that it was made by Fiber Fab International in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There's an identification number. And um, some of it is a little hard to see, but hopefully I can get it to focus there. And this paint actually has metallic in it. It's got a really, really nice finish to it. So what I want to do is preserve this. Whoever had this before, it was red originally, I think, because you, uh, there are a couple chips that I can see red under. But whoever did the respray of the white, like if you look right here, if I can get the focus without <laughs> hitting the shade, you'll see that it's red. So um, I think the respray they did is absolutely phenomenal. They, they, they definitely got it done right. Um, they did have the car undercoated too, and uh, I know they had it done in you know afterwards because when I changed out the uh, oil, the oil filter actually had um, undercoating on it, so I wasn't able to read the model on it. But once again, I went down the auto parts store and we used the 1987 Chevette motor as the base for everything. We did the brakes, and that was the case. So if you guys like this car, let me know in the comments. I know this is kind of a love or hate car because it's a replica, but the cool thing about these replicas is they're now becoming their own antique. And this being a well done one, it's kind of becoming a little more sought after, especially by the new generation of car lovers. It's a fun little car. Uh, you're not gonna break the bank buying it. Let's go ahead, I'll lift this engine up here so you guys can see. It's nice how it um, kind of goes like that. And you can see it's a little four-cylinder in there. Uh, I redid the uh, alternator, alternator belt. We were getting a squeal. After I did that, the squeal was still there, and then I kind of adjusted the alternator a little bit, and the squeal went away. So I'm hoping that that's fixed now, because that's quite frustrating when you're driving down the road and you get a squeal. New battery in there. Uh, outside that, we did do the gas tank, had a small leak, we fixed that. And we changed the fuel filter, which I think I'm gonna do again, because we're getting um, a, a high idle. I don't know if you can tell right now, but it idles a little high so when you go into gear it will kind of slam into gears, which I don't like. So, we're going to go take it for a ride now. Hopefully I can catch some footage of it driving um, and then I'm going to change out the spark plugs, but I'm going to basically finish this video with this ride. Uh, I want to make sure I get that in while I have nice weather and then um, come back and do the spark plug. So stay tuned. We're going to jump in right now and take it around the block. Okay, so when we get in, you'll see here, this is an automatic, and it looks like a Chevette gearbox. Um, the gauges, now that I'm sitting in here, you can see the, uh, if I rev it, the tachometer works, but I don't think it doesn't work right. I would say I don't think it actually functions properly. The speedometer seems to function completely right. Oil pressure seems right. Um, it's not really going up much, but I think that that is correct. And water temperature is, it seems to be definitely working. Um, fog lights work uh, I believe this is the headlights there maybe and I'm not sure one of them is the blinkers as well and then I think you have um, a lighter in the middle here which is kind of unique and then the AC which the fan 
actually works. I haven't had time to check why it's not blowing cold, but we're going into better times of the year right now for Florida, you know, where we don't really necessarily have to have it cold, but I definitely want to look into getting that working. Um, it might just need some Freon, but it has this radio that does not work and we'll obviously be changing that out. I'm going to probably just drop in a that same one that I have in the Mercedes, which is just a standard MP3, uh, no CD or anything like that. So you'll see, you see how it kind of slams into gear because of the high rev. So that is definitely something we are going to have to get fixed on the more immediate side. So hopefully the changing out the spark plugs does that. And you can feel it takes off. It's not fast by any means. Um, and we have a nice beautiful neighborhood we live in. We live in a little cul-de-sac that's right outside of this really nice neighborhood. But outside of that, um, there's not a whole lot. I'm gonna take you guys down. Just a back street here that a lot of people cut through. And uh, so it's not a real quiet street, unfortunately. Um, sometimes during the day it is, but most of the time this is a cut through street. So we have tons and tons of traffic. Uh, today is Sunday, so not a whole lot of people on the road right now. But if you tried to take this road during the week, um, it would not be fun. So yeah, we can take a look at the speedometer. You can see there, I think that's in kilometers on the, the top. Yeah, so we're doing about 25 miles an hour. And that does seem very, very accurate. Sorry, the windshield does still have the uh, water on there from washing it. I apologize about that. We're going to take this turn here. The blinkers do work on this, but they, it's funny. They actually seem to function properly when the lights are on. And then if the lights are off, they have a very long delay, almost like 20 seconds before they start blinking. So I'm going to have to figure out if that's a relay or what that is. But yeah, real fun car. That was just a quick, quick trip around the block there for you guys so you can kind of see the nice Florida weather we've got right now and take a look at this car and see how it drives. You know, my wife is absolutely in love with this and we're going to probably take it up to the store now. So I'm going to park it up in here in my carport area and that's where we had it parked, you know, over the rainy season because you really can't take this car much. Uh, this year was crazy. We had rain almost every day for several months straight. You can hear it um, idling real high, and I'm gonna try to get it into park there. And it doesn't do that right when you start up. So hopefully changing out the spark plugs. Um, I did run some fuel cleaner through it, and it does have some old fuel in the tank. So there's a lot of things that could be causing that. But if you guys know um, what that might be, this is not a high mileage engine from what I know. It's barely been driven since the gentleman had it. So I'm guessing that the engine's probably fine, transmission's probably fine, but it's probably just needing some sort of tune-up. So let me know in the comments below if you guys um, kind of know exactly what that might be, what I should look for, whether it be um, vacuum lines or anything like that, because I haven't really spent a lot of time doing anything on this car. It's the first time I've had it out in a few months. But uh, yeah, we wanted to get it ready for Thanksgiving so when uh, we have family coming in We can take the kids around the block in it and they can have a lot of fun. Have a great day I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. This was just kind of a quick little update on this car I got to clean it down now I'm gonna uh, play around with the spark plugs clean up some of the chrome pieces and Just wanted to let you guys take a look at it go for a quick spin and have a great weekend guys like subscribe and share This is Pete from Pete's carport